Well, hello there, crew. Welcome to one of the premier geologic sites in the world. We are at the southern tip of the infamous San Andreas Fault here in Southern California. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey out here checking out some cool geology. Thanks for being with me. And uh, yeah, let's just get right to it. Um, let's start with the diagram here. I've got a fun little map I've drawn that might help give you some context of things. Um, so what we have here is the southern end of California. Here's the California-Mexico border. This body of water here is California's largest. It's known as the Salton Sea. And it sits out there towards the setting sun across the highway. Salton Sea is a whole complete uh, another story, so we'll skip that for now. But we're about right here, right near the southern tip of the San Andreas Fault. And the San Andreas Fault continues from this point northwestward for another 1,200 kilometers, about 750 miles, to where it terminates off the Northern California coast near Cape Mendocino. And this fault is the plate boundary between the Pacific Plate, which lies to the west, and the North American Plate, which lies to the east. So right now I'm standing on the North American Plate, but just down there across the highway where the Salton Sea sits, that is the Pacific Plate. So that is the other side of this plate boundary here. The San Andreas Fault, as you may know, is a transform plate boundary, a strike-slip fault. So rather than moving or shifting up and down, it mostly has side-to-side -side motion. It's what we call a right lateral strike-slip fault. So if you were to stand on one side and look across, things would over time appear to shift to your right. In reality, the Pacific Plate, this western side, is moving much faster to the northwest than the relatively stationary, compared to the movement of the Pacific Plate, the relatively stationary North American Plate. So that's sort of the rundown of what we have going on here. This is the southern, southern tip of the San Andreas Fault, where it actually uh, manifests itself with some uplifted and tilted Pliocene rocks, some sandstones and conglomerates that were shed off the nearby mountains during the Pliocene uh, about three to four million years ago or so. Um, so from this point northwest, this becomes a major structural boundary. It shifts uh, drainages. As the drainages cross it, every time there's an earthquake on the San Andreas Fault, that moves one side of the fault. And so drainages you'll see in places get um, offset or deflected. It even offsets large mountain ranges throughout um, southern and central California. Major feature here. And of course, this is the cause of so many earthquakes that have happened uh, prehistorically and also somewhat historically. Um, let's look at the rocks up here a little bit. Um, and then we'll talk about a few other things as well. One of the rocks I found up here, which is kind of fun, and this story will go along with another video, is um, this lake out here, the Salton Sea, was once a much larger freshwater lake called Lake Cahuilla. And at the southern edge of the Salton Sea, and I'll get down there to do a video here, hopefully before it gets too dark, there are five buttes, actually volcanoes, called the Salton Buttes, and they erupted mostly pumice and obsidian and rhyolite. And those that produced pumice produce chunks of pumice like this one in my hand here that floated in the lake and then washed up on shore. So in places you can find these rounded, uh, very wave um, tousled pieces of pumice. Hopefully you can see some of the little specks in there and it's exceptionally light. Uh, to the touch. You can find these rounded pieces of pumice in places. Um, let's go ahead and look at these rocks in a little bit of detail. And these are mostly stream and alluvial fan deposits. You'll see in here places chunks of quartz. There are granitic rocks in here as well. Uh, there's another one down here, sort of a golf ball sized chunk. And I believe a lot of these, I'll have to double check these, but some of these may have been shed from mountains to the west and were shed into this basin, otherwise known as the Salton Trough, uh, over a period of time. You can see the bedding here. We can see the 
uh, dip. So the tilt of these beds is about a 15 degree dip or tilt to the right, which is to the east. And you can see sort of the poorly sorted nature of this. In places it's pretty well sorted, mainly coarse sandstone, but then there's places where there's much larger chunks of rock embedded in these units. Um, let's head up a little further here and see what we can find. Yeah, so some more of these well-bedded deposits, granites, quartz, some darker material, probably some volcanics. Um, might be a little bit of metamorphics in here as well. This looks like possibly a metamorphic, like a nice in this particle here. But yeah, this little uplifted set of hills here is more or less considered the southern manifestation of the San Andreas Fault. You might see the narrow canyon up here to the right. I think that's the same wash I parked at, Salt Creek Wash, which drains the mountains to the east. Wow, just beautiful. And um, in another video, what I'll do is talk about why we have such variations in topography here. Why is the Salton Sea and Palm Springs sitting below sea level while we simultaneously have mountains like uh, San Jacinto, the big mountain over there above Palm Springs, it goes up over 11,000 feet. That gives us a total topographic relief in this region of over two miles, which is pretty substantial. So how is the geology responsible for so much topographic diversity? In places like right here, you can see that it's dominated by a little bit softer material. Um, it's recessed down instead of forming the outcrops like we see here. So these are a little bit more muddy or fine sand units like we see right through here. Uh, and anything else you can think of? Not necessarily, just a really nice little spot, nice little hike. I'm going to probably end this one now because I'm hoping to get to one last spot for a video before it gets too dark. So we'll go ahead and sign off from this area here, Salt Creek, at the south end of the long, continuous San Andreas Fault, a huge transform plate boundary that forms the plate boundary between the Pacific and North American plates. Thanks for joining me and appreciate all your support in helping my channel out. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.